Vladimir Putin seems to be a constant staple of controversial headlines across the world. From cybercrime to back alley business deals, Putin is infamous for playing by his own rules when it comes to politics. The Russian president has been in power since 1999, and with approval ratings still high among Russians, it looks like he's here to stay. But not everyone knows the story behind this legendary figure. Today we are counting down 10 things you didn't know about Vladimir Putin. Putin puts a lot of thought into his macho self-image. All it takes is a quick search to find hundreds of photos of him hunting and riding horses, shirtless in the Russian tundra. But ahead of a 2012 poll, Putin took no chances when it came to his strong appearance. He put on a display of physical prowess at a Kremlin youth camp 230 miles northwest of Moscow in front of thousands of patriotic young Russians, who were encouraged by organizers each year to put the strongman politician on a pedestal. Dressed in chinos and a light-colored striped shirt, Mr. Putin talked tough too, calling the United States a parasite on the global economy. But it was his physical feats that seemed to wow his young audience more than anything. Photographs of the event showed Mr. Putin trying to crush a frying pan with his bare hands as young admirers looked on. It's not clear whether he succeeded. Another image of the man many Russians regard as the father of the nation showed him shimmying up an artificial climbing wall Spider-Man style, without a safety harness or helmet. Mr. Putin leapt off the wall before reaching the top, jokingly muttering something about cowardice. Other images showed he had adjudicated an arm wrestling contest between two young men, taking part in the contest himself, and looked on as a weightlifter balanced a barbell loaded with heavy weight plates on his back. These are just a handful of the numerous publicity stunts that Putin has performed over the years, but the fact is he puts the average overweight politician to shame. Putin is a notoriously private person, and little is known about his childhood. But when the public gets a glimpse, it's immediately very clear that he had a difficult youth. At a political event in 2012, he described the loss that his family suffered during the 872-day siege of Leningrad, the Soviet-era name for St. Petersburg, when his one-year-old brother was taken from his mother, died in a children's home, and was buried in an unmarked grave. My brother, whom I have never seen and did not know, was buried here. I don't even know where exactly, Mr. Putin said flatly during an annual reef laying at Peskaryaskove Cemetery in St. Petersburg where 470,000 civilians and soldiers were buried in mass graves. A memorial plaque at the site states that 641,803 people died of starvation in the city between 1941 and 1944. My parents told me that children were taken from their families in 1941, and my mother had a child taken from her, with the goal of saving him, he said at the event, which marks the anniversary of the blockade's end. They said he had died, but they never said where he was buried. Mr. Putin, born in 1952, was his parents' third son, but was the only one to survive. The first Putin's son died in infancy. This seems to have left an indelible mark on Putin, because he now never shows weakness. After his challenging upbringing, Putin apparently began misbehaving in school. A Russian daily announced that it had found President Vladimir Putin's grade book in a dusty attic of a small wooden house where he spent his childhood summers. The book painted a picture of an 11-year-old boy who was far from any sort of greatness at the time. One instructor's comment said, Before class, Putin threw chalkboard erasers at the children. Others read, Didn't do his math homework, behaved badly during singing class, or talks in class. The gradebook revealed that Putin was once caught passing notes to a boy named Bogandov when he should have been paying attention to his teacher. It also said the future president and judo champion fought repeatedly with his gym teacher during the 1963-64 school year. Young Putin was sent out of class and punished for forgetting his uniform, according to the paper. One day, Putin's father was even summoned to school, after the boy got into a fight with an older student. Putin's grades didn't reveal anything exceptional either. On the Soviet five-point scale, he scored threes in arithmetic and natural science and a two in drawing. The only subject in which he scored a five was history. He also got a five for behavior, despite his altercations in gym class. The tabloid said Putin's true love was German. Along with the grade book, the newspaper said it also found Putin's school notebooks. Young Putin loved German so much that there were German notes all over his books for other subjects, it said. The paper said it even found German flat cards tucked inside his chemistry notebook. It's no secret that Putin calls the shots in Russia, and has a network of spies and henchmen at his disposal. No one knows exactly how deep his organized crime routes go, but it's clear that it's starting to pay off for him. In 2011, a Russian version of WikiLeaks posted a number of photos of Putin's secret mansion in the forest by the Black Sea. Many estimate the property to be worth almost $1 billion, making it one of the most expensive houses in the world. Soon after the pictures went up at ruleaks.net, the site was blocked by Russian authorities. 
Dr. Sergei Kalishnikov accused Putin of paying for the palace through bribery and theft. But of course, Putin's office maintains that he has nothing to do with this palace. Regardless, the mansion is surrounded by ornate courtyards and is sandwiched between a mountain range and the beach. This is all in line with the wealth that Putin has secretly accrued over the years. Some even believe that he is the richest person in the world. It's well documented that the title belongs to Jeff Bezos, but unlike Bezos, Putin doesn't need to declare his earnings or the massive payouts he gets from illegal activity. But it's impossible to say for sure. According to the Kremlin, the Russian president earns around $133,000 a year and lives in a small apartment. That description doesn't jive with most accounts of Putin's lifestyle. Former Russian government advisor Stanislav Belkovsky estimated his fortune is worth $70 billion. Hedge fund manager Bill Browder, a noted critic of Putin, claimed it was more like $200 billion. So why can't we pin down Putin's net worth with any certainty? The 2015 Panama Papers revealed that Putin may obscure and bolster his fortune through proxies. On top of his billion-dollar mansion, he reportedly has access to 20 different palaces and villas. An opposition leader and Putin critic Boris Nemtsov produced a dossier claiming that Putin owned multiple private jets, helicopters, and yachts. The president was also accused of owning 58 different types of aircraft, including a Dassault Falcon, which seats 19. One of his planes was said to have an $11 million cabin fitted out by jewelers and a toilet which cost close to $100,000. This plane has room for up to 186 passengers. Putin is accused of owning five of these. The dossier claimed Putin has a collection of four yachts, each costing thousands of dollars to maintain. Rossiya, one of his yachts, was upgraded in 2005. It reportedly cost $1.2 billion to do so. This is all in addition to a massive closet full of luxury clothes and watches. It's impossible to confirm exactly how wealthy Putin is, but it's obvious that his reported state salary is entirely fabricated. A former member of the Russian parliament is gunned down in broad daylight in the Ukrainian capital of Kiev. A longtime Russian ambassador to the United Nations drops dead at work. A Russian-backed commander in the breakaway Ukrainian province of Donetsk is blown up in an elevator. A Russian media executive is found dead in his Washington, D.C. hotel room. What do they have in common? They are among 38 prominent Russians who are victims of unsolved murders or suspicious deaths since the beginning of 2014. The list contains 10 high-profile critics of Russian President Vladimir Putin, 7 diplomats, 6 associates of Kremlin power brokers who had a falling out, often over corruption, and 13 military or political leaders involved in conflict in eastern Ukraine, including commanders of Russian-backed separatist forces. Two are possibly connected to a dossier alleging connections between President Trump's campaign staff and Kremlin officials that was produced by a former British spy and shared with the FBI. Twelve were shot, stabbed, or beaten to death. Six were blown up. Ten died allegedly of natural causes. One died of mysterious head injuries. One reportedly slipped and hit his head in a public bath. One was hanged in his jail cell, and one died after drinking coffee. The cause of six deaths was reported as unknown. Putin has long dealt with opponents harshly. Senator Patrick Leahy said in March that Putin has murdered his political opponents and rules like an authoritarian dictator. But like every other crime he's been accused of, Putin laughs these incriminations off and continues to live his life of impunity. Putin had a legendary rise to power in the 80s and 90s. He began as a low-level spy for the KGB in East Germany, but he quickly rose through the ranks and began to implement controversial policies. As prime minister in 1999, Putin was alleged to have been behind a string of apartment bombings that killed 300 residents and were officially blamed on Chechen separatists, according to Alexander Litvinenko, a former FSB officer and whistleblower who fled to Britain. Putin denied the allegations, which Litvinenko wrote in a 2001 book, Blowing Up Russia. The bombings provided the rationale for a military campaign in Chechnya that coincided with Putin's first run for the presidency. Putin's war in Chechnya employed a scorched-earth policy that left thousands of dead Chechens. Human rights violations were exposed by Russian reporter Anna Politskovskaya. He also used the crude language of a street fighter when defending his military onslaught against separatist rebels in Chechnya, vowing to wipe them out even in the toilet. It appears Putin has never played by the rules, even before he rose to power. Putin in 1996 earned a postgraduate degree that is a rough equivalent of a PhD at the St. Petersburg Mining Institute, though he never attended that school. According to a 2006 presentation by analysts Igor Danchenko and Clifford Gatti at the Brookings Institution think tank in Washington, D.C., his dissertation was on the investment in large-scale natural resource extraction, like oil and gas, to restore Russia's great power status. Pages of it were largely copied from a 1982 American business school textbook called Strategic Planning and Policy, Gaddy said. Of course, Putin and the Kremlin in general have denied these allegations, but the textbook is still in print, and his faults have been confirmed. Most presidents usually adopt a serious, no-nonsense approach when they're on camera, but once in a while, showing off a different dimension to their personas has helped boost their appeal. On May 14th, Putin was filmed playing two Russian songs, Moscow Windows and Evening Song, on the piano, while waiting to meet Chinese President Xi Jinping in Beijing. 
He's also mentioned in interviews that he's a huge Beatles fan and has been cited at numerous concerts across Russia. He once stated in high school, I mostly liked rock music and hard rock. Then, to my surprise, I discovered world music, which at first seemed very peculiar to me. Now I like to listen to music from different places and in all kinds of situations. Even when you're working, some world music can calm the nerves. Putin's legendary lateness is back in the spotlight after he kept Pope Francis waiting during a recent visit to the Vatican. What lies behind his chronic tardiness? The Russian president was 50 minutes late to meet the Pope, and Papa Cordiers were left shivering outside as they waited to welcome the Russian president, who was held up by women protesting outside his hotel in support of punk band Pussy Riot. The Pope and the Italian press appear to have taken it in stride. Given his reputation, they probably expected nothing else. Not so with the South Korean media. After he kept President Park Geun Hye waiting for 30 minutes during a visit to Seoul earlier in November, particularly as the already late Putin stopped en route to chat with martial arts enthusiasts. But the liberal Russian website Sion.ru points out the Koreans need not be upset. Being only half an hour late is a mark of the deepest respect from Putin, for the Russian leader has a long catalog of late arrivals to his name, including 14 minutes overdue for Queen Elizabeth II in 2003, 40 minutes late for German Chancellor Angela Merkel in 2012, three hours overdue for talks on Syria with US Secretary of State John Kerry, and he kept parents of children killed in an air crash waiting for two hours at a Bash Kordistan Cemetery in 2002. It's no secret that Putin has a serious problem with both the United States and Europe. But recently, the sight of vast amounts of banned foreign food being bulldozed, buried, or burned started causing controversy in Russia. Tens of thousands of people have joined a protest petition to President Vladimir Putin. For the past year, Russia has banned most fresh produce from countries imposing economic sanctions against Russia over the illegal annexation of Crimea. This includes the US, Canada, and most of Western Europe. Now anyone caught breaking the ban will have their produce seized and destroyed. As the presidential decree came into effect on Thursday, state TV ran reports accompanied by vivid images of huge round cheeses being dumped and crushed. Reporters hailed the crackdown on contraband. But many Russians are deeply disturbed by the development. If they start destroying food, what's next? It's like our authorities don't care about the people, argues Muscovite Olga Savaleva, who has launched an online petition against the decree. It has attracted more than 285,000 signatures. For many Russians, food scarcity is a recent memory, and it's painful for them to see Putin wasting millions of pounds of food. But for him, it's just another power play.